Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in the Caddy playlist. So in this video we're going to see how to configure IP restriction in Caddy. So suppose you have some resources that you want to be only accessible by the clients with exact IP addresses or totally reversed like for example you have some resources that you're serving on a defined path and you don't want some exact IP addresses to be able to access those resources but the whole other world to be able to actually have access to those resources so suppose scenarios like you have detected some malicious traffic or you have detected some anomalies sourced by some IP addresses so you might want to deny all the requests sourced with that exact IP address so if you haven't watched the previous videos I recommend you give a visit where you can learn about the basic installation and basic concepts of caddy and reverse proxies and also you can learn about how you detect low or deny bots based on the user agent header of the requests so let's get down to work so right over here if I hit ls you can see that I have all the configuration files I need in order to bring up a caddy server with my custom configuration file that I'll be trying to implement this IP restriction policies to the caddy server. So firstly, if I go to the Docker Compose file, you can see that I've got two services, one being the backend server, that is a dummy echo server that actually responds with the details of the requests that it receives. Like for example, you make a post or a get request to the slash API with some body and headers and custom data. It will be returning back the exact same data with exact same details as the response for your request. So this will be acting as our backend server so we can actually make requests and receive responses to simulate a real world example of a backend server. So next right over here we've got the configuration for the caddy service which I'm trying to use the official image with the recent version. Next I've set the restart policy to tell the docker engine to try to restart this caddy container if for any reason that this container gets exited or stops by any reason. Next by passing the environment variables I'm setting the time zone in order to define the time zone inside the container that will be created by this service. Next over here I've got the port section that I'm mapping the port 80 and 443 inside the container to the exact same ports so actually later I'll be telling the caddy to listen on this exact same ports so as a result me as the client on the outside network will be able to access the caddy server that is listening on these two ports inside the container from the outside network. And lastly over here I've got the volume section that I'm mounting from my machine to inside the container. So like for example the dot slash caddy file to tell the caddy server that will be created inside the container to try to configure itself from this file. So next the dot slash data and dot slash config directory to the slash data and slash config directory inside the container so the caddy server will actually try to use these directories in order to write its data and its configurations that it will create in these two directories. So with having these in mind I'll exit the docker compose file and try to nano the caddy file and right over here you can see on the global section I am turning off the automatic redirect from HTTP to HTTPS so I'll be able to actually make requests to the HTTP port also in order to be able to showcase the relevant configurations. So next right over here I'm defining the caddy to listen on the 80 and 443 port. So inside this block I'm actually defining a matcher that I'm using the remote IP matcher 
and I'm passing my machine's IP address as the allowed IP address with some different IP so you can see that I can pass multiple different IP addresses and CIDRs as I want based on my use cases. So next I have a handle block right over here that is handling the slash allowed path and inside this I'm actually passing the allowed IPs matcher to this handle directive right over here which is a reverse proxy to the backend service that we defined with this exact same name in the docker compose file and next over here i've got a respond that will respond for any other requests that does not meet the requirements of this handle block right over here so it will be a static response with a 403 status code so the thing that will happen right over here for the clients that are making requests to the slash load path that does not actually have ip addresses with these given IP addresses right over here. The requests will be dropped and responded with caddy itself with a 403 status code and the requests won't be actually proxied to the backend server. So with this configuration suppose you have some services and you want some clients with exact IP addresses that you define that you desire in order to be able to access your resources behind caddy but all the other clients with different IP addresses not to be able to access these resources so this is exactly the configuration to pass to the caddy server in order to handle this functionality for your backend services. So next, if I move down right over here, I've got the exact reverse configuration in which I'm trying to pass the denied IP addresses, which actually I've passed my own IP address again over here again with some different IP address in order to showcase that you can actually pass multiple different IP addresses by passing multiple remote IP matcher and next with exact same configuration I'll pass a handle to the slash denied path and inside that I'll try to handle the denied IPs matcher and this time respond with 403 stats code with a static response to the clients that actually has these two IP addresses and for all the other requests that are being received by all other clients with different IP addresses the requests will be actually proxied to the backend service on the port 80 which is again the same name for the service of the echo server in the docker compose file so lastly right over here i've got another handle directive that is actually responding statically for all the other requests to the other paths so again in order to showcase that you can configure these IP restrictions configurations on your desired paths and not to all your caddy configuration. So I'll try to exit out of the nano and if I say docker compose op d as a result I can see that my both containers are being created with a network attaching those two containers to that network so as a result these two containers will be able to communicate with each other inside that created network and as a result they will be able to call each other through their service names so if I say docker compose ps I can make sure that both my containers are in op status with the relevant ports mapped to inside those containers and if I say docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines of the outputted logs of these two containers so i'll hit enter and as i can see things are looking correct and actually right now i should be able to send requests to the caddy server so i'll move to another terminal and i'll try to use curl in order to make requests to the address of the machine that my caddy server is being served on so if i hit enter you can see that not any of the handle blocks are actually met because i am actually making request to the root path of the caddy server so i'll try to make a request to the load path and if i hit enter you can see that the stats code for my request is 200 which is okay and i'm actually receiving the relevant 
detailed JSON of my request from the backend server, which is the echo server itself. So again, with the same command, but this time to the slash denied, I'll try to make another request. And if I hit enter, you can see that the stats code for my request is 403, which is forbidden. And I'm actually seeing the static response sent back from the caddy. And actually my request is not being proxied to the backend server. So with this configuration, I was able to define a path to only give access to some exact IP address and also define some other path Paths to deny some specified IP addresses but allow all the other IP addresses to that exact path. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. Also if you want to learn and deep dive into Nginx or Kong API Gateway, I have the links to the playlists for both tools that you can find in the description section of this video. So lastly, if you found the video interesting or useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this. And with that, that's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next videos.